What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix. Hi, and welcome to my gate. Today I'm joined with the legendary Slayer Music, Master of Quest Guides, to break down the essential quests for your account. We are going through the best quests for every type of account, and then a part specifically for Iron Man. If you miss anything or need something specific, all of the timestamps will be in the description below. A quick tip to free-to-play players, this video is more directed at members, but a great goal to work towards as a free-to-play player is to complete Dragon Slayer, which allows you to wear the rune plate body and green dehyde body. As a new member in old school, quests are one of the most effective ways to level your skills at a low level. Slayer Music has a complete quest order list, taking you from level 3 all the way through to the quest cape. There are a handful of quests that can be done one after another on a brand new, fresh level 3 account with a very minimal amount of skilling. After completing all of them, all of your stats will be very well set up to venture further into the game. While some of the quests shown have bosses and monsters to defend them, they are all doable and have been done many times on fresh accounts. If you're new and want to follow that list, there's a link to the spreadsheet down in the description. There's a variety of skilling methods and unlocks that come from quests. Firstly, there are two that are required to gain access to certain skills. Druidic Ritual is required to start Herblore, and Rune Mysteries is required to craft runes in Runecraft. Although, to make talismans, which is good Runecraft experience at low level, you don't need to complete Rune Mysteries. There were also two game integrity changes that made two quests important for skilling, and these were done to stop bots. Firstly, completing Eagle Speak is needed to use box traps, which are used for hunting Chinchampas. To buy battle staves from Zav now, you need to have almost completed what lies below. One of the last steps of the quest allows you to buy them. There's a few more quests that unlock skilling methods. Smithing Dart requires completion of the Tourist Trap quest. After the feud, you can partake in blackjacking for thieving XP, and that's the fastest possible thieving training method from 55 to 91, although it's very click intensive. My Arms Big Adventure allows you to use the herb patch in Trollheim, which is disease free, making it very profitable. A newer quest in the series, Making Friends with My Arm, unlocks yet another herb patch, which is also disease free. A lot of areas across Gilinor require a quest to access. To enter Mauritania, you need to complete Priest in Peril. To venture into Mort Maya Swamp, you need to start Nature Spirit. To access Fossil Island, you need to complete Bone Voyage. To reach God Wars, you need to finish Death Plateau and partially complete Troll Stronghold. To access the Piscatoris Fishing Colony, where you can fish monkfish, you need to complete the quest Swansong. Keldegrim, the land of the dwarves, can be accessed after starting the quest The Giant Dwarf, which also allows you to use the minecart system from the Grand Exchange. Completing the Fremic Trials allows you to travel to Jatitso, Natis Nut, Miscellanea and Ancetria, four locations with a range of other quests and features to complete. Doing the Underground Pass and consequently starting Regicide gives access to the Elf Lands, also known as Terrawen. Finishing the Shallow Village quest is required to enter Shallow Village. Corsair Cove is restricted by the Corsair Curse quest. Kutanath is restricted by a part of the Watchtower quest. Muslim Harmons, containing the grounds of Trouble Brewing, requires you to complete Cabin Fever. To gain access to Harmony Island, it requires the Great Brain Robbery. Lastly, the Goblin City, Dorgash Khan, requires you to complete Death to the Dorgashan. Those are the main ones. There are a few smaller, less important areas with quest requirements, but we will leave it up to you to find those ones out. Now for some account unlocks. Completing the Night Wave Training Grounds mini quest after the King's Ransom quest allows you to use Piety, undoubtedly a must for main accounts. Desert Treasure unlocks the Ancient Magic Spellbook, giving access to a range of unique teleports plus bursting and barraging. The Lunar Spellbook is accessible after the Lunar Diplomacy quest, and completing Dream Mentor unlocks seven more spells on the Lunar Spellbook. Another unlock is Managing Miscellanea, which is a great passive way to make money on your account. This requires the Throne of Miscellanea quest, as well as the Royal Trouble, to get enhanced rewards. Completing the Tears of Gothic's quests gives you access to the minigame, which gives a weekly experience reward in your lowest skill. Moving into items you should work towards getting from quests. 
Firstly, Dwarf Cannon allows the use of the Multi Cannon, which speeds up Slayer tasks and can be used for fast low-level range training. Animal Magnetism allows you to purchase Ava's devices, which are a must for ranged. The Slug Menace quest allows you to wear Proselyte armor, which, despite of the new prayer items being added into the game, Proselyte is still one of the top tier in terms of prayer bonus. Completing the Family Crest quest gives you two very important gloves. Goldsmithing gauntlets double the amount of experience you get from smithing gold bars, and they're used to get the maximum XP rates at the Blast Furnace. Cooking gauntlets are a must if you choose to cook fish through to 99, as they lower your burn rate significantly. Next is Eyes of Glowfree, which rewards a crystal seed that can be made into a crystal saw, giving an invisible plus 3 boost in construction. Rum Deal rewards the Holy Wrench, which saves money in the long run, because you get 2% extra prayer points back when you're drinking a prayer potion. Completing the Haunted Mine is a must since you get the Salve Amulet, which provides extraordinary bonuses against undead monsters. There's also Lost City and Mokimatis for their dragon weapons. There are some elite crew scrolls that have challenges called Hot and Cold Clues, where you need to use a strange device from making history quest to work out a solution. Lastly in the item unlocks is Barrow Gloves, which is a long-term goal for any main account, which requires the full completion of Recipe for Disaster. They provide a very high attack, defense and strength bonuses essential for combat. Completion of quests also unlocks a range of teleports, which undoubtedly speed up your overall efficiency in-game. I mentioned just before that Desert Treasure and Lunar Diplomacy unlock spellbooks loaded with unique teleports. Well, while you do need to complete the quest in order to use the teleport tablet and the teleport spell, you don't even need to start the quest to use any of these teleports in another person's player-owned house, so you can still use these teleports, like the Carol Teleport to Canifus, without having the quest or spellbook. In order to be able to use the Ardoin Teleport at 51 magic, you need to have completed the Plague City quest. On the topic of the regular spellbook, the Edgar's Ruse quest allows you to use the Trollheim Teleport, which is great for God Wars and Herb Runs. There's also the Apatol Teleport, that requires you to save a Wawogi from the Recipe for Disaster. Completing the Ghost Ahoy quest gives you the Ectophile, which provides unlimited teleports to the Ectophunctus. The Grand Tree and the Trino Village quests unlock two types of gnome transportation. The Grand Tree allows you to use gnome gliders, providing seven different stops across the RuneScape map. The Trino Village lets you use spirit trees, which are vital for efficient farm runs. Arguably, one of the most important types of teleportation in the game is fairy rings, which are accessible after starting and doing a part of Fairy Tale Part 2. You can also unlock Balloon Transport, which can be utilized in farm runs as well as for Iron Man, and that requires the Enlightened Journey quest. Partially doing Morning's End Part 1 gives you the Teleportation Crystal, which provides teleports to Letia, giving easy access to the Fruit Tree Patch nearby. Karit's Memoirs, which is rewarded after the Client of Corent and subsequent quests, unlocks a wide range of teleports across the Great Corent. Dragon's Medallion from the Taste of Hope teleports you to the Theater of Blood. There is also the Royal Seed Pot from Monkey Mantis 2, which provides unlimited teleports to the bottom of the Grand Tree, and it also works up until level 30 Wilderness, like Dragonstone Jewelry, making it a popular option for PKers as well as PVMers in the Wilderness. The last teleports you unlock from quests can be accessed in your minigame teleports tab. Using the Blast Furnace Teleport requires access to Keldegrim, which needs you to start the Giant Dwarf. The Shades of Morton quest unlocks the teleport to the minigame. The Rat Pits Teleport can be used after Rat Catchers, and the Trouble Brewing Teleport comes after Cabin Fever. As a pure account with one defense, there are a few more quests that we highly suggest completing. A wide range of quests give huge combat XP rewards and don't give defense experience. Ones like the Waterfall Quest and Fight Arena will really give your account a head start. In order to wear climbing boots, which are second best in slot melee boots for pures, you need to have completed the quest Death Plateau. For those wondering what the best in slots are, those are currently Spite Manacles, which have no requirements to wear but have the same bonuses as Dragon Boots. In terms of strength bonus, Finishing the Great Brain Robbery awards you with the Barrel Chest Anchor, the weapon with the best strength bonus at 60 attack, giving a higher strength bonus than a Dragon Two-Handed Sword. 
lastly, Horror from the Deep gives the God Books, with the Zamorak and Armadil God Books being the best in slot offensively for melee and range. The God Books are also great for PKing on any type of account since you can get as many as you want for free. The last section of the video is quests specifically useful for Iron Man. Managing miscellanea is one we have already mentioned, but it is a huge one for Iron Man in terms of gathering resources, particularly for Herblore. Completing Hanley the Sand quest gets 84 bucks of sand delivered to your bank for free, daily from Bird, which can be converted into molten glass for crafting training. It is worth noting that Ultimate Iron Man cannot partake in managing miscellanea, nor can they get the 84 bucks of sand since they don't have a bank. Starting Iklorin's Little Helper is required to access Sophonum, which can be bypassed on regular accounts by buying a Pharaoh Scepter. But if you want to play Pyramid Plunder as an Iron Man, you need to start that quest. Death to the Dorgashan gives access to the Ham Storerooms, which are an easy way to get jewelry as an Iron Man. And arguably the most important one for Iron Man, Cabin Fever, which allows you to kill cave horrors which drop the Black Mask. As you can tell, so many quests will benefit your account in so many ways. So with that being said, if you aren't subscribed to Slayer Music or don't know who he is, be sure to check out his channel and subscribe to help him get over the 100,000 milestone. Thanks to Slayer Music for joining me today. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks, bye.